we continue with our Sunday School series entitled Celebrating God. Lesson two has King David dancing before the Ark of the Covenant, also known as the Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of God. The sacred relic of the Israelites was cherished as a symbol that let everyone know that God was with the Jews. In the same way we respect our nation's flag in times of battle and attack, or attacks like 9-11. And when the flag, as our nation's symbol of freedom, is flown in peace, the ark consisted of a pure gold-covered wooden chest with an elaborate lid called the mercy seat. The ark is described in the book of Exodus as containing the two stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. According to New Testament, the book of Hebrews, it also contained Aaron's rod and a pot of manna. The biblical account relates that approximately one year after the Israelites' exodus from Egypt, the ark was created according to a pattern given to Moses by God when the Israelites were encamped at the foot of Mount Sinai. Our lesson today features David accompanied by 30,000 male troops dancing before the ark. In 2 Samuel 6, 1 through 5, God is present with the souls of his people. When we see the outward tokens of his presence, David is settled on the throne and he honors God by reviving the ark and bringing it back to the newly Christian capital known as Jerusalem. As Christians, Jesus Christ is our ark in and by God is manifested for our prayers through the ark of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ especially typifies that through, our, through his mediation for us. The Levite priests should have carried the ark on their shoulders. The Philistines, who had captured the ark from the Israelites, may have carried the ark in a cot without suffering for it. But if the Israelites did, as they did it at their peril, when the ark was almost dropped in transit and the man who stopped to keep it from falling was struck dead. Our lesson today celebrates this wondrous event as the first great king of Israel, David, dances before the Ark of the Covenant. And like David, my mind is made up. I'm going to praise the Lord. Let's take a look at our worship leaflet that goes with this particular lesson. Come, let us worship God with the passion and joy of David and all the people who sang and danced before the Ark of the Covenant. Let us worship our Savior with songs of praise and thanksgiving. And now one of my favorite, as for me and my house, I'm going to praise the Lord. Let's listen to the Chicago Mass Choir. I'm going to praise the Lord. My mind is made up. I'm going to praise the Lord. Let's take a look at our scripture that goes with this lesson. David, again, David, uh, again, gathered all the chosen men of Israel. And as we said earlier, 30,000 
David and all the people with him set out and went from Bella Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the seraphim. They carried the ark of God on a new cot and brought it out of the house of Amadad, which was on a hill, on the hill. Uzzah and Oiel, the sons of Amadad, were driving the new cart with the ark of God. And Oiel went in front of the ark, and David and all his house of Israel were dancing before the ark, to be dancing before the Lord with all their might, with symbols of lights and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen epithet. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Michal, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw David King David, leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people and the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to eat to each. He provided a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their home. As for me and my house, we're going to praise the Lord. Back to the Chicago Mass Choir. Let's look at our lesson. Yes. My mind is made up. I'm going to praise the Lord. And then we take a closer look at our lesson. We hope that you had a chance to read all of these scriptures before the lesson, as well as our verse to remember. Uh, we spoke of that earlier. And then we have the questions that we hope that you had an opportunity especially the one that says, why was David dancing before a gold statue? You may want to contemplate that. And of course, uh, five questions. Number one, how does God's presence in our life make our worship holy? Wherever you worship God, at home or at church or wherever, name some celebrations in your life that made you want to dance or cry, or happy beyond measure. Question two, what is the difference between native or ritual dancing and liturgical participation in worship? Liturgical participation simply means according to a worship plan. Question three, have you ever attended a worship service that made you want to sing, that made you want to dance, and made you want to bring your whole heart, mind, and body into the service. Question four, when worshiping, how do you make it clear that you understand, you understand yourself, that you are under the gospel or God's spell alone? And question five, how do you acknowledge God's holiness 
in your everyday lives? How do you choose God every day, whether in worship or in life? I'm hoping that you would consider these questions prior to our Sunday school lesson every Sunday morning at 9.30. Go to our website, ukavicpc.com. Ukavic, U-T-Q-I-A-G-V-I-K, pc.com. And under events, you can zoom right into our Sunday school class. Let's take a look back at our closing leaflet and pray the prayer of the day. Lord of hosts, we offer you praise, rejoicing in your goodness and mercy. We praise you with music, even though our voices may be off key, tone deaf or timid and barely audible. We praise you with dancing, though we may be May, though we may trip over our own feet or move without grace, we praise you with rumptuous laughter and resounding words of joy, whispered words of thanksgiving, and secret expressions of relief. Let everything that breathes praise you, O Redeemer. Yet in the midst of our praise, we offer our prayers for the wounds of the world, saying, Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth that it may be refreshed and restored to health. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for our nations and that we may learn to live in peace. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are wounded or whose potential is stunned by principalities and powers. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We lift before you now the concerns of our hearts, both spoken and unspoken. And now stir us from complacency, Lord. Open our ears and eyes to what you would have us do and guide our feet, guide our hands, God, our voices in praise. Now, with joy and thanksgiving, renewed commitment and praise, we encourage you to go forth to love and serve the Lord in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As for me and my house, I'm going to praise the Lord. <laughs>